Okay, so hi folks. Um, we're going to continue with our topic in tessellations. Um, we're still in our playlist and our course in mathematics in the modern world. And here we're going to talk about the kinds of tessellations as far as, as, uh, as time allows us to, to discuss it. So here we're going to talk about regular, um, semi-regular and demi-regular tessellations. All right. Now we're going to start with regular tessellations, of course. And um, regular tessellations are tessellations that are made up of congruent regular polygons. Okay, congruent regular polygons. Okay, so when you say regular polygons, the, the sides are equal or congruent and the angles are congruent. So imagine a, a, a regular tessellation is made up of those repeating shapes of regular polygons. So like, for example, a square, um, um, an equilateral pentagon, a triangle, an equilateral triangle, I mean, and then such. Okay, so we're going to make and see some examples in a while. So regular polygons, okay, are polygons with congruent sides and angles, as I have said. Congruent sides and congruent angles. And some examples are the equilateral triangle, the square, the regular pentagon, sorry, regular pentagon, and regular hexagon, and then, you know, just put the word regular, and then it will be a regular polygon. Anyways, um, let me see, let me show you an example. And um, also give the properties of the regular tessellations. So a regular tessellation um, must tile and fit with no overlapping and gap, um, as a tessellation should be. Um, the tiles must be must be regular polygons and all the same. So again, they they should be all replicas of that regular polygons, and each vertex must look the same. Again, each vertex must look the same. So for instance, we can see these um, regular tessellations here. Um, in this first picture. It's composed of regular equilateral triangles, triangles which are equal in length. So all these lengths here are equal. Everything here, I mean, all the lengths are equal. I just put some tick marks there to indicate that they are. Um, here, these are squares. So they should be equal, you know, squares. And here we have a regular um, what? pentagon, oh, sorry, hexagon. Hexagon, that's six sides. Six sides. So it's a regular hexagon. So regular polygons make a tessellation out of it what you'll have is regular tessellations as the word as the word suggests so um that's it um some tessellations can be named okay take note some tessellations can be named by using a number system so we're getting into the concept of how to name a particular tessellation so um you you would first pick a vertex you you, you pick a vertex a vertex is like a, um, a point where the 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 edges or or the the vertices okay of the polygons meet okay so it does not matter which vertex you pick you pick actually and then you identify the polygons um around that vertex it stands for the vertex here according to the number of sides each one has so um in this part of the video, we're going to know on how to name a regular tessellation. So step number one, find the regular polygon with the least number of sides as, as far as possible. We're going to find this polygon here and we're going to count there um, on one of its edges or one of its vertices rather. It should have the least number of sides. Um, secondly, find the longest consecutive run on this polygon, that is, two or more repetitions of this polygon around that vertex and indicate the number of sides of this regular polygon. Okay, indicate the number of sides of this regular polygon. Proceeding in a clockwise or counterclockwise order, indicate the number of sides of each polygon as you see them in that such arrangement. So um, let's get into it, one example. Um, say we have this equilateral triangles and let's follow the steps find um, a regular polygon with the least sides they're all the same you know and then um we're going to um find the longest consecutive run on this polygon indicate the number of sides and proceeding clockwise or counterclockwise indicate the number of sides so for instance we're going to take a random point here so say the 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 the, the slide suggests to, to take this point so there are six triangles that meet at each vertex so this makes this at three 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 tessellations why is it three so we count the number of 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 sides of this triangle here which which is which is one of the the points on the vertex so this it has three how about this triangle here it touches it 
through here. So it has three. How about this one? So it has three. How about this one? It has three. How about this one? It has three. And this one, it has three. So hence, it's called 333333 tessellation. So that's how we name um, a regular tessellation. All right. So let's give one more example. Um, say it's not that regular. It's not composed of all the same um, regular polygons, but we have here. So there are two triangles. So for instance, we're going to take this point here. Imagine this point here. So we're going to count the number of, of, of sides each um, shape around that vertex has. So how many sides do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six here. Um, how about this one here that touches that? We have, um, of course, it's a triangle. So we have three here. We have a triangle. So therefore, we have three. And then we're going to name it 336 tessellation. Okay, you can take any other point on this tessellation and it will still be three, th uh, three, three, six. For instance, um, let's take this point over here. Okay, so we have, it has this one six, this one is three, this one is three, so hence three, three, six. How about um, say this point over here? So this is three triangle, this is a th triangle. Of course, it, it should continue, oh my goodness. Okay, because it's cut by the by the limitations of the, of the surface. But it, it is indeed a triangle as everyone will know, as everyone knows. And then we have here a six. So this is still a three, three, six um, tessellation. So that's how you um, name, okay? That's how you um, name um, a tessellation. So again, follow those steps. And then what you'll do, what you'll have is going to be um, that name, the name of the tess tessellation. Okay, now let's, let's move forward from regular tessellations and we will say um, hello to the semi-regular tessellations. In particular, we're going to see the examples which shows us the Archimedean tessellations, of course, from 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 the great Archimedes, you know, the the greatest mathematician of antiquity. So regular tessellations of two or more different polygons around the vertex, and each vertex has the same arrangement of polygons. So that's a semi-regular tessellation. When you have two or more different polygons around the vertex, and each vertex has the same arrangement of polygons. So um, the previous one showed, shows us already a semi-regular. So we'll see more of this in the next slide, such as these. So these are all examples of semi regular tessellations so it has already the names down below so we're going to to take one um point one vertex um let's see if it, if it will be a three 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 six so let's say it's going to take this point here okay now well, how many um sides do we have in all of the polygons around that shape so we have three here that's a triangle we have three here we have three here we have three here and we have this is a hexagon, so this is a six. So hence we have three 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 six um tessellation. Three 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 six. Okay, so you can take any other point and it will still be three 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 six. Um say for instance you want to take this point here. So without without writing the, the numbers, we have three 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 six. If you want this point here, you have three 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 six. And so on. You can you can you can try to pick out your own vertex there, and then it will still be the same um, name. Here, um, it's three three four four. Why why does it uh, have that? So let's take this point for instance. So we have four here. We have four here. We have three, three, and three. Hence three 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 four four. All right. One more example. Let's have this one. So we have three here. Three three four and four so we have three 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 four four tessellation that's why it's named like that and we have here another regular uh, semi-regular tessellation so three three four three four why is it why does it um um read as this as you notice we have three threes here and two fours we have three threes here and two fours but um the arrangement of the three and the four that is in the third and the fourth place is um is switched giving us or leading us to to have a different kind of tessellation even though the 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 regular polygons are are the same so for instance we're going to take 
pick this vertex here. So this is a 3, this is a 4, 3, 3, and 4. So we're going to take the long, the, um, what do you call that, the longest run. Okay, we're going to take the longest consecutive run of this polygon that is two or more repetitions. Okay, so we can see that it's going to be 3, 3, 4, 3, 4. We cannot, we cannot name it 3, 3, 4, 4, 3. Okay, because we, we should be naming it counterclockwise or clockwise. So here we have 3, 3, that's the longest run. 3, 3, 4, 3, 4. And you can take any other point. So for instance, you want to take this point over here. And this is 3, 3, 4, 3, 4 still. Okay. So that's one example, or some, not only one, but three examples of semi-regular tessellations and how to name them. Now let's have another type of tessellation. That's what we call a demi, I don't know how to pronounce, pronounce this, demi or demi-regular tessellation. So a demi-regular tessellation is an edge-to-edge -edge tessellation. Um, but the order or the arrangement of the polygon at each vertex is not the same. This is taken from the book Tessellation in 2017. So I'm going to show you one example. And um, naming it would be quite um, not that effective. Say we have this one. Okay, so we have this demi-regular tessellation. It's it's quite good in the eyes. But try to name it. We, it's, it, 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 um, it, it breaks the, the rules in naming a regular tessellation. That's why it's called the demi-regular tessellation. So we have here... Um, one, two, three, four, five, six points vertices, okay, which has different names, okay? So we have one, two, a different name, three for a different name here, four different name, five different name, six different name. So naming this one is going to be um, a six, three, six, three, but naming this one will be quite different. This is going to be um, three, three, four, three, three, how many sides are this one? I don't know, but one, two, three. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. So this is a dodecagon. Okay. So it's a 3, 3, 4, 3, 3, 12. Sorry. Uh, 3, 3, 4, 12. Sorry. 3, 3, 4, 12. So 3, 3, 4, 12. So um, it has a different names. So therefore, um, we cannot um, practically name it. So um, that's it for this video. Um, what have we learned? We have learned about the kinds of tessellations. Um, namely, we have learned the irregular tessellations, semi-regular tessellations, and the demi-regular tessellations. So that's it for this um, kinds of tessellations. Hopefully it helps. And also, hopefully you have learned something um, from this video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you'd like and subscribe. See ya.